Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. I'm always grateful. I was just listening to the presser that uh, the opposition leader has given um, about and is making some allegations regarding hacking. Um, uh, but I, I essentially think this election is over. It's a fait accompli. Um, and uh, I think uh, um, the opposition leader is doing some IR investor relations because he's got shareholders who can't be too happy. Um, he's disputing the unofficial live vote tally. Um, the irony is this auto transmission of results was designed as a guard against rigging. Macro thoughts, I take it back to my piece over the weekend, which was about the end zone and the mighty dollar. And I said it was as if the FX markets had reached the conclusion that it is all in the price now. Maybe not an impeachment of Donald Trump, but pretty much everything else is baked into the price of the dollar. The dollar is the elephant in the room in the financial markets. And I was saying that we'd have to study its behavior this week um, closely for signals that it emits. Um, I think the dollar rebound will gain strength um, because just about everyone has been lulled into a false sense of security about it. And that the dollar, which was deep in its end zone, has just thrown a Hail Mary pass, which is set to make up a lot of ground. Put up a chart of the Bloomberg Dollar Index. Um, Andrew Cosgrave uh, tweeted it, and I'm looking, as I said, for a meaningful rebound in that index. Vanity Fair tweeted 200 plus days into the all tweets, no action Trump era. Patience is wearing thin. Home thoughts, something from Moby Dick to start with. It's not down on any map. True places never are. Then I came across a story about MDZHB, which has been broadcasting since 1982 and no one knows why. And that took me back to Don DeLillo. Somehow we were picking up signals from radio programs of 40, 50, 60 years ago. I like this photograph from That Wild Cat. Mount Kenya views from several hundred feet above old Pajetta. A quote from Jack Kerouac, the world was like a dream, like a phantom, like a bubble, like a shadow, like a vanishing dew, like a lightning's flash. Another quote from uh, Hunter S. Thompson, there was no helmet on those nights, no speed limit, and no cooling it down on the curves. Well, that was pretty good as well. Then I like this photograph, giraffes, Maasai, Mara at dusk. Uh, David Roccaberti, beautiful photograph. And I'll share a couple of mine uh, from a tweet I posted, giraffe love, um, uh, and another one of an old male giraffe. Interesting piece I came across in the Atlantic magazine, have smartphones destroyed a generation? More comfortable online than out partying, post-millennials are safer physically than adolescents have ever been, but on the brink of a mental health crisis. Trump is vowing fire and fury if North Korea keeps threatening the US. And uh, a war between North Korea and the US would not be pretty, that's already established. And it you know, this old missile thing took me back to Thomas Pinch and Gravity's Rainbow. But it is a curve each of them feels unmistakably. It is the parabola. They must have guessed once or twice, guessed and refused to believe that everything always collectively had been moving toward that purified shape latent in the sky. That shape of no surprise, no second chance, no return. Yet they do move forever under it, reserved for its own black and white bad news, certainly as if it were the rainbow and they its children. And that's from Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow. 
slow down, think strategy, Mr. President. Playing nuclear chicken with North Korea could make the Cuban Missile Crisis look like Pinocchio. This is from Jim McLaughlin. North Korea says it's examining plans to strike the US military base of Guam with a missile. I wrote a piece a long time ago called Far Away in Distant Lands Lies the Hermit Kingdom. They have all had tiny little hands like the elves and the elves and the shoemaker. Um, uh, and basically I was saying that it actually served China's interests to have this sort of mad dog North Korea. Because after all, there are 35,000 soldiers parked on the Korean peninsula, whom I'm sure Xi Jinping would like to run into the sea. Uh, interesting discussion on The New Yorker. How will Trump's presidency end? Salman Rushdie, Tony Kushner and Claudia Rankine discuss. Um, I like this tweet from Simon Allison, and this was of yesterday. Today is a country-defining, continent-defining day in two superpowers, Kenya and South Africa. Results in both will shape Africa's future. I tweeted uh, that it's a fait accompli, and Paul Virilia likes speed of transmission by the IEBC punctures any strategy of tension. Uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is around 55%, um, and I had a prediction of 54%. What was extraordinary were the images that came out of yesterday, Kenyans waiting since 2 a.m. to vote. Under 25s in UK applauded for voting when it takes five minutes. Kenyans wake up early to hire, fire their leaders, tweeted Robin Jogu. This is another photograph of voters checking their names in the voters list outside the municipal inspectorate polling station in Mombasa County. And I asked yesterday on Twitter, where in the world would you see this level of commitment to the vote? Long queues at Kimbuni Old School Kangemi. And uh, I, I concluded by saying, you know, one thing that we know for sure is that Kenya believes in democracy. 31st of July, I asked, will we see a youth quake? And if so, how does it break? Uh, Bloomberg was writing an article about how disaffected youth are the wild card in Kenya's cliffhanger. Um, so we're all struggling, he said. We're living on hope that one day they will care about us. Raila Odinga said he'll respect the results. If he loses fairly, he's now just had a presser where he's uh, alleging uh, hacking of the computer system and therefore obviously that he has not lost fairly. Um, Kenyatta said he would accept the result. Take a look at this photograph of an old lady who woke up early to vote in Kiambu. Um, and Kenyan basically cast six ballots yesterday with 19.6 million registered voters. Obviously, it was a massive logistical exercise. Um, I, for one, think that it is a fait accompli, and uh, that it's fundamentally bullish for the markets. And I'll explain to you in a, in a little while why. I doubt any Western photographer has been to this steel plant in North Korea. Heavy industry has le never looked more visceral and intimidating, David Yarrow. Former Pakistani Nawaz, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is risking the wrath of the army and the people as he plans to install his wife. Imran Khan is the coming man, I sense. Bitcoin regret chart, the US dollar 1000 investment made on the 22nd of July 2010 would now be worth $68.5 million. Let's move on to the currency markets, euro dollar still under pressure, 117.28. Dollar index, when I looked last, 93.66, but this 93.50 area is the key area of support. Japanese yen, 109.93 when I walked in this morning, now 109.66, that's all about North Korea. Swiss franc, 0.9674, the pound is at 130.10. Uh, the Australian dollar, 0.872, India rupee, 63.775, South Korean, 111.37.20, that's softened up. 
as expected, Brazilian real 312.78, Egyptian pound 17.767, and the rand uh, hovering around the 1340 level. Um, I think you've got to scale into the rand now because I think uh, President Zuma is mortally wounded. Um, I'll put up a chart of the dollar index. This was given by triple leverage. The key level, in my view, is 93.50. We've just ticked above it. We're doing some work around here, but I expect a more robust move higher from here for the reasons I've already explained. Euro dollar, um, 117.27. I think it's targeting 114.50 now. BAT's $25 billion lucky strike. Big bond uh, uh, raising exercise yesterday. Uh, take a look at those details. U.S. crude futures uh, settled at forty-nine dollars and seventeen cents, ticking up here to forty-nine dollars and thirty-two cents. Let's see how that plays out. I think we're going to forty and then to thirty-two. Uh, gold. Uh, last time I looked was around the twelve seventy level. It still doesn't have a lot of impetus. I find cobalt prices. Take a look at this. What a chart. Pile of new energy metals will invest in cobalt, lithium, vanadium, rare earths, nickel, and tin. Uh, we've been focused on the evolution of the battery chemistries, and this has allowed us to invest early in different components of the battery. Um, the company was among investors to buy up physical cobalt before selling it for cash and shares. Cobalt 27 Capital Corp listed in Canada this year to offer equity investors a way to take a stake in the market. Cobalt is essential for lithium-ion uh, batteries powering anything from Tesla Inks cars to Apple Inks iPhones and iPads. Uh, Parler may invest through debt and equity stakes in mining projects or buy and store physical metal to benefit from rising prices. Let's move on to Sub-Saharan Africa. Read this from Howard French, whom you won't forget, I interviewed a while ago, um, and he's speaking about the current State Department under Tillerson, and the US presidency under Trump, vis-a-vis -vis Africa. Congo ordered an internet slowdown to restrict social media, and of course, uh, roads were very quiet, but not empty on Villa Motte de Kinshasa. This is a photograph of Avenue Lumumba, going back into town from David Aronson. The situation there is not promising at all. South Africa's rent weakened after Zuma survived a no-confidence vote, but the point was made by Justice Malala. Here's the key. 40 ANC MPs rebelled. Zuma walks, but he is dead. A hundred of those 198 ANC MPs voted ANC unity, not Jacob Zuma. That's a big point. This is game on, a big moment for South Africa's democracy, said Richard Callant. Um, uh, Twitter torn between against all odds Zuma and Zuma the sinking Titanic. Um, and someone else was saying Zuma being forced to resign is not priced in. Most of the people expect him to survive this vote, which he did. Um, but the point is, he's wounded. That's what makes me bullish now about the rand. But we've got to be careful and tread carefully. But I think we should start looking to position now for his departure. He is in the departure lounge. South African all share up 10.52% year to date. Dollar versus Rand. Take a look at this chart. I think, as I said, scaling into longs is the strategy from here. Nigeria's foreign exchange market is starting to see the unification that bond and stock investors have been calling for. This is a very positive step, and it's something I've been calling for for a long time. Uh, the drop in the Naira has almost wiped out the spread with the black market rate. This was needed for investors to get more comfortable about putting money back into the country. Nigerian all share is up and eye popping 41.4% year to date. Ghana Stock Exchange up 34.25% year to date. Africa has been performing well. Kenyans cast vote in East African powerhouses, 10 selection. This was article in the Wall Street Journal and I was I said uh, this there is a tsunami of money that would flood into Kenya if this election can be pulled off well. From an economic perspective this is a pivot election 
it could produce a very bifurcated outcome. What I meant by that was free market country, long established credentials over 50 years versus a much more interventionist mega foodification of an economy, which is what uh, the uh, opposition candidate had spoken to me personally about at a function that I was at. He said, look at mega foodie, that's what I'm going to do. And I think, you know, therefore that's why we would have had a very bifurcated answer. But I think essentially here um, we're in a situation where we're going to crowd in international money, uh, produce a very bifurcated in, uh, outcome. Uh, thank heavens for the torches on cell phones, tweeted Maggie Fick, nice photograph. Um, Kenya shilling 103.845, Nairobi all share up 19.12% year to date. I think it's going to move substantially higher. And as I said before the uh, election, a win for President Kenyatta would translate into a further sharp re rating higher. NEC 20 is up 19.84% year to date. Um, uh, and then finally, let me leave you with this photograph by Mohammed Hersey. Silly season and posters galore in all spaces. Goats are now helping to remove them, he said. So whilst it's a little bit fluid, given the allegations made in this press conference, I think essentially um, it is a fait accompli and as such is a constructive development. Once again, thank you for stopping by.